In the news today, a 64 age 68 year old man of Achi Fakapichila's area in Lundazi district of Eastern Province has drowned in Kakumba stream. And Health Professions, a council of Zambia HPCZ has closed down 32 healthcare facilities in Lusaka for breaching the national health standards. And now the news in detail. A 68 year old man of Chief Kapichila's area in Lundazi district of Eastern Province has drowned in Akakumba stream. Justin Piri of Akajohola village was coming from a drinking spree met his fate on Friday between 17 hours and 18 hours when he attempted, attempted to cross the flooded Kakumba stream on his way home. Musuzi Wad, a councillor Daudi Piri, who is also the son to the deceased, has confirmed the incident to Zanis in an interview. Mr. Piri disclosed that on the fateful day, the deceased, who was one of the beneficiaries of a social cash transfer program, had gone to Kakumba Pay Point to get his money. He narrates that his father was later then seen drinking at a named bar within Kakumba Trading Center before he met his fate. Mr. Piri says that the body of the deceased was found on Saturday morning floating in an upside position in Kakumba Stream. He notes that the body of his late father, who has left behind 10 children, is lying in Lundazi District Hospital Mortuary awaiting a burial. The Health Professions Council of Zambia, HPCZ, has closed down 32 healthcare facilities in Lusaka for non compliance and breaching of the national healthcare standards. The 32 healthcare facilities are said to have been stocking and dispensing expired drugs and medical supplies. Announcing the closure during a media briefing in Lusaka, HPCZ Public Relations Officer Chinyota Simuko said that the council has observed with great concern this growing trend. Ms. Simuko states that the HPCZ will not allow the situation where healthcare facilities stock and dispense expired drugs and medical supplies to persist as it compromises patients' safety. He says it is against this background that the HPCZ recently conducted compliance monitoring inspections in 120 healthcare facilities in Lusaka province from December 3rd to December 30th, 2018. Mr. Msimoko says that the 32 closed down healthcare facilities will thus be dealt with in accordance with the law with penalties will be extended to individual pharmacists and doctors in charge of the facility. Now the 32 non-compliant health facilities have since been closed and will be dealt with in accordance with the law. In our quest to effectively protect the public and to ensure total compliance to the national health care standards, penalties will extend to individual pharmacists and doctors in the charge of these facilities. Now, the health practitioners in charge of the healthcare facilities have a professional responsibility as well as obligation to make sure that their facilities operate in conformity with the national healthcare standards. And for this reason, the council will summon the practitioners who are in charge of the cited facilities to account for their actions and to show cause why they have not been held to compliancy and are in breach of the professional code of conduct and ethics. The Health Professions Act number 24 of 2009 of the Laws of the Republic of Zambia under section 75 allows the council to pursue heads of institutions or units in their individual capacity or any facility both in breach of the national health care standards. HPCZ would like to appeal to the health practitioners to continue striving to uphold professional norms at all times. We wish to take this opportunity to thank practitioners whose facilities have been found as being compliant. Now Government says it is giving all the necessary attention to the alleged infringement upon the copyright of the Safe Motherhood Action Group's SMAGS, a private invention it has adopted. The inventor, Beck Banda, who is a public health expert, has accused the United Nations Population Fund and the World Vision for using SMAGS without his expression of permission. Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary for Administration Dr. Kennedy Malamam says that government is already working closely with all UN agencies that have been accused of infringing upon the copyright of SMAGS. Dr. Malama has also acknowledged that there has been some correspondence between the Ministry of Health and Dr. Bandam over the genesis of SMUGS and its inventions. 
In an interview with QTV News by telephone, Dr. Malama says that being the key stakeholder in this issue, the Ministry of Health hopes that it can quickly resolve this matter. Dr. Malama says his ministry is very interested in ensuring that this matter is put to rest, adding that his ministry is aware that Dr. Banda has lawyers who are presenting him in this matter. Indeed, as a ministry, would like to acknowledge that there has been some correspondence between uh, the health sector and Dr. Bex Banda regarding the safe motherhood action groups, Genesis and Invention, and that matter is receiving all the attention. Uh, Minister of Health being the key stakeholders in this matter, uh, we are working closely with the other UN agencies who have been mentioned by the claimant in this issue. So. We hope we can quickly resolve it. We are all very, very interested in ensuring that this matter is put to rest. I wouldn't go into a lot of details because I know Dr. Beck Banda has lawyers who are representing him. So all I can assure him and the other interested parties is that uh, this matter is receiving attention and we should be bringing it to closure in the shortest possible time, at least on our part as government. The Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA, has intercepted a truck carrying smuggled goods worth 807,000 kwacha in Livingston. ZRA Commissioner for Customs, Sydney Chibabuka, has disclosed in a statement at the QNews that the truck was seized during a verification operation after ZRA officers became suspicious of the declaration. Minister Chibabuka says officers discovered that the consignment was falsely declared as lactogen milk when the actual goods were assorted groceries, which included diapers, coffee, butter, and cooking oil. He says after collecting documents from the Zimbabwe Revenue Authority, the officers confirmed that the consignment was truly assorted groceries and not lactogen milk for infants as declared to the ZRA. Mr. Chibabuka states that the further investigations revealed that the importers had been making several importations that were falsely declared to avoid fiscal inspections and payment of duty. He says that due to the gravity of the offense and noting that the importer is a frequent smuggler, both the goods and the truck have been seized and will be forfeited to the state. Mr. Chibabuka says that the license of the clearing agent has also been suspended with immediate effect in line with Section 141 and Section 149 of the Customs and Exercise Act. The ZRA Commissioner for Customs has since warned the traders that are in the habit of smuggling that they risk losing both their goods and vehicles. The opposition UPND leader Hakainde Chilema has encouraged Zambians to be more positive as they enter the new year 2019. Mr. Chilema has urged people in the country to face 2019 with a renewed sense of hope. In his seasonal greetings a statement jointly issued with his wife Amutinta, Mr. Chilema has to told Q News that he is humbled with the ongoing spirit of oneness and unity of peoples in the country. Mr. Chilema states that this is as it should be, adding that Zambians must not allow anyone to divide them. He has also reminded people in the country that Christmas, which falls on the 25th of December annually, is a time for giving and sharing. Mr. Chilema says that giving and sharing are ever need not be in fiscal form, but that one celebrating this day can give, Lord, can give love, a smile, a helping hand, or anything that demonstrates the love of Christ. He has advised Zambians to, on the other hand, celebrate Christmas responsibly and avoid involving themselves in illicit activities that may endanger their lives and those of others. Fellow countrymen and women from Mutinta, myself, and on behalf of the UPND, we send you our seasonal greetings. We wish you a happy Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Christmas is a reminder of the greatest gift our Lord gave to the world, and that is Jesus Christ. It is a time for giving and sharing. For those who can afford a few gifts, please let's share the little we have with those of our citizens that are in need. Let's celebrate responsibly and avoid involving ourselves in illicit activities that may endanger our lives and the lives of others. As we enter the new year, we must face it with a more positive and a renewed sense of hope. On our part, we are humbled with the ongoing spirit of oneness and unity of purpose as citizens throughout the country. This is as it should be, and we must not allow... 
German ambassador to Zambia Akim Bukat says his country and Zambia still maintain very close and good cooperation. Mr. Bukat says the German business delegations that visited Zambia in 2018 and the just concluded bilateral development talks or attest this cooperation between the two countries. He has told QTV News in an interview that to this effect, German's financial support to the growth of various sectors of the Zambian economy in the next two years, in the next two years, now stands at 90 million euros. Mr. Bukert has referred to agriculture and energy as some of the sectors that his country is seeking to support in the next two years in Zambia. He states that the ending year of 2018 has thus been another good year of cooperation between Germany and Zambia. We have seen Zambia presenting itself as a cultural partner at the ITB, which is the world's largest tourism fair in Berlin. Um, we had a lot of ministerial visits to Germany. Um, we had a lot of delegations coming here and just recently we finished our bilateral development cooperation talks with the Zambian government where we have pledged uh, 63 million uh, in different programs, especially energy sector, decentralization, good financial governance, uh, but also another 20 million in the sector of agriculture and about uh, 10 million in the area of the support of the refugees and the surrounding communities in the north and east of the country. So it's around about 90 million euros for a two years uh, period. And I think this shows that Germany and Zambia have a very close and good cooperation. We have seen Republican President Edgar Lungo has sent a team of four ministers to Lundazi District, Eastern Province, to access the extent of damage at the washed away Msuzi Bridge. The ministers who have since inspected the, the Calvert Housing and Infrastructure Development Minister, Ronald Chitotela, Presidential Affairs Minister, Freedom Skazwe, Minister in the, vi in the Office of the Vice President, Asyuvia Charlie Kosam, and Eastern Province Minister, Makebi Zulu. Housing and Infrastructure Development Minister Rona Chitotela says that the Road Development Agency will in the next seven days put up a temporal bridge at the Msuzi Calvet on the Chipata Lundazi, which has been washed away by heavy rains to allow movement of motorists. The Calvet, which is about six kilometers from Lundazi Boma on the Chipata Lundazi Road, was washed away on Friday, 21st December 2018, cutting off the road link between Chipata and Lundazi. Mr. Chitotela says the construction of a temporal bridge which will be done by RDA in conjunction with the Zambia National Service and Zambia Army will begin in the next seven days. He says he has confidence in the RDA that will quickly mount the temporal bridge therefore calling on all motorists from Chipata to use a temporal bypass road through C. Zimanda to access Lundazi. Meanwhile, Presidential Affairs Minister Freedom Skazwe has directed the RDA to quickly come up with a budget for the construction of the temporal bridge. Minister Skazwe says that the bridge should be constructed in the shortest possible time so that the distribution of farming inputs to the district is not disturbed. And a minister in, uh, and a minister in Vice President's Office, Sylvia Chalikosa, says that the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, will engage the Ministry of Finance to ensure that the funds are released soon. And Eastern Province Minister Makebi Zulu has appealed for calm from the people of Lundazi because government is working round the clock to normalize the movement of people. Meanwhile, RDA Chief Executive Officer Engineer Elias Mwape said his engineers are determined to ensure that the temporal bridge is down and all that the ministries have asked for will be delivered. Minister of Agriculture Michael Katambo has reassured the country that Zambia is food secure as it, as it has made stocks in the strategic reserves. And Mr. Katambo says government has extended the 2018 maize marketing period to enable Food Reserve Agency, FRA, buy additional grain for strategic reserves. The minister says there is no need for people to cause alarm that the country is not food secure as the FRA is currently holding on to about 500,000 metric tons of maize grain in its strategic reserve as a carryover stock from the 2016-2017 farming season. Mr. Katambo states that Secretary to the Treasury, Fred Sonyamba, has allowed the paper the purchase of additional mains and Ministry of Finance is currently mobilizing money to finance the exercise. 
He has disclosed that the second round of maize purchasing, which will continue to January next year, has been necessitated so that FRA can stock adequate grain because the agency only managed to buy only 157,000 tons during this year's maize marketing season. We, 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 we've been engaging the Treasury to find some more money so that at least uh, we can continue to buy maize uh, from our satellite uh, uh, de depots through FRA, money is which Ministry of Finance is trying to mop up so that at least they can release it to FRA so that we can continue the purchases of maize. You know, in our strategic reserve, um, we have some good reasonable carry over stocks which is about close to 400,000 metric tons because as you are aware we had a bumper harvest in the previous uh, uh, two previous farming seasons where we harvested about 3.6 metric tons of maize we had a slight reduction about 33.6 percent we harvested about 2.3 metric tons which was slightly uh, lower so hence <clears throat> with the 174 plus the 400,000 metric tons, our strategic reserves are supposed to be about 500,000 metric tons. So as a country, we are food secure. There's no need to cause alarm. There's no need to panic um, our citizens to see that maybe we are food insecure. As you are aware, also, we've put these administrative restrictive uh, measures just to to let to not, not to let um, maize grain or mealy meal to be exported so that at least we can <coughs> service and save <coughs> our citizens within our country and obviously most of the millers who didn't purchase maize who are buying maize from our strategic reserve through FRA. So our government as a last resort, um, we are offloading maize uh, to certain millers at least to make it um, uh, available on the market and that uh, once we offload also our citizens are able to access um, uh, the product. We, we, we Still in the news that the Human Rights Commission HRC has welcomed the acquittal by the Lusaka Magistrate Court of six human rights defenders who were charged with a case of holding an illegal assembly. The HRC thinks that the acquittal of Laura Miti, Sean Tembo, Fumba Chama, Bonwell Mwewa, Lewis Mwape and, uh, and Mika Mambazi has, uh, has uh, buttressed the previous court uh, judgments. Spokesperson Mwelo Mlea says the commission acknowledges the positive efforts by the judiciary in consistently providing guidance on the need to respect and protect the right to freedom of assembly. Ms. Amlea says that this is, an enshrine, this is as enshrined by Article 21 of the Constitution of Zambia and other regional and international human rights instruments to which Zambia is a party. He has told Q News in a statement that the HRC, however, regrets that the, that the guidance and the counsel being given by the judiciary on the right to freedom of assembly has continued being disregarded. Ms. Amlea says it is thus the desire of the Commission that the revised Public Order Act will be tabled in Parliament for enactment during the first quarter of 2019. The right to freedom of assembly is critical to good governance, is critical to bettering the improved sales delivery because it promotes accountability and transparency in the management of public affairs. It's therefore our hope that this judgment is going to further inform the process of reviewing the Public Order Act and that the Public Order Act must be tabled before Parliament uh, during the first quarter of 2019. We are aware that the government has been expressing unwavering commitment to reviewing the Public Order Act and that they've put it as part of their seventh national development plan and also they've made commitment at international level at the UN to ensure that the Public Order Act is amended. It's therefore our hope that it is indeed going to be amended and the process of applying it in a non-discriminatory manner should begin with this judgment so that uh, the rights of individuals regardless of their uh, views must be respected. Uh Tourism and Arts Minister Charles Banda has warned against the people settling in wildlife reserves if the country is to address the scourge of human-animal conflicts. Mr. Banda has told Q News that government is committed to addressing the challenge of human-animal conflicts in wildlife preserves across the country. 
The minister says that this, however, will only be achieved if people follow the rules of not settling in territories meant for animals. Mr. Banda says his ministry is since training more wildlife police officers who will sensitize people on the dangers of settling in wildlife preserves and also ensure that there are no settlements in areas meant for animals. The minister has also noted that poaching is also a contributor of human-animal conflicts and the animals tend to flee to human settlements to avoid being killed. Mr. Banda has also discouraged the practice of agriculture in wildlife preserves. People should avoid the issue of settling illegally in national parks and the game management areas where we know very well that those are animal corridors. People should not settle, people should not even get involved in agricultural activities in areas like that. Because the moment you do that, you are putting problems with the animals whose habitat you have going to violate. But apart from that, I want to tell you that we have embarked on a training program of more wildlife police officers to beef up the numbers which, are, which have dwindled to, 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 to this far. We uh, wish a situation where we have enough wildlife police officers to police those areas, but at the same time to go with the message of sensitizing our people not to settle in national parks and game management areas where we have said these are preserves or preserved areas for wildlife. The moment we have done that, the problem will be solved. The moment we don't do that, then we are in a problem. And poaching also is one way which, which, which contributes to animal-human conflict. Because when animals have been uh, attacked in the bush, they run and they run into the human settlement areas. So it's poaching also which we need to control. And we're on top of things now because we have support from uh, our cooperating partners, including the military now, who are training our staff at different levels and so forth and so on, so that we are able to reduce poaching. Still in tourism news, a parliamentary chief whip Stephen Chungo has called for sustained efforts to boost Zambia's tourism. Mr. Chungo said this when the lawmakers who are part of a delegation led by Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Patrick Matibini, visited the Taj Mahal in Agra, India. Earlier in an interview with India's parliament at television, a Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Patrick Matibini, said the decision by the president of India, Sri Lam Nath Kovind, to visit one of the seven natural wonders of the world, the Victoria Falls in Livingstone, during this, his three-day state visit to Zambia early this year should encourage more Indian tourists to visit Zambia. First Secretary, Press and Tourism at the Zambian Mission in New Delhi, India, Bangwenavili now reports. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Patrick Matbini, has been in India for benchmarking. The Speaker is accompanied by Government Parliamentary Chief Whip Stephen Chungu, United Party for National Development, UPN Dilufanyuma Member of Parliament, Leonard Fungulwe, PF Chilanga Member of Parliament, Maria Langa, Clerk of the National Assembly, Cecilia Mbewe, and Zambia's High Commissioner to India, Judith Kabijimpanga, among others. He held meetings with the Vice President of India, Vankaya Naidu, and Speaker of the Lok Sabha or Lower House, Sumitra Mahajan, in New Delhi. Dr. Matbini sampled India's tourism sector by visiting selected places. The Speaker gave his thoughts in an interview with India's Parliament Television. Uh, uh, beyond the economic diplomacy, uh, this trip also through this benchmarking uh, exercise gives us an opportunity to explore uh, parliamentary diplomacy. The lawmakers visited Taj Mahal in Agra where they called on Indian tourists to think of visiting Zambia. Taj Mahal is a mausoleum built by an Indian king 450 years ago using marble in honor of one of his four cherished wives who died while giving birth to his 14th child in a marriage that lasted 17 years. From seeing what is happening in the tourism sector here in India, it is something that we have to look at and learn from, that uh, we can actually run our country just on tourism. We are here in India, Zambians, 
we also need the Indians to be go going to our country so that uh, we know we, 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 we work as a team, work together and you know as, as, as partners in development. As Zambians we have to love Zambia and to be able to market Zambia ourselves. According to recent statistics revealed by India's Union Minister of State for Tourism Independent Charge, Alphonse Kanatanam, 82 million people are currently employed in the tourism sector in his country, and India is expected to be generating 50 billion US dollars in five years. Bangwanavile, New Delhi, India. That was Bangwanavili from India. The Technical Education, Vocational and Entrepreneurship Training Authority, Teveta, Acting Director General Cleopas Takaiza has noted the need for Teveta institutions across the country to be upgraded with materials and modern infrastructure. Mr. Takaiza has told Q News that most Teveta institutions in the country have introduced new courses that will require upgraded infrastructure and materials for the learners to receive quality training. He says some of the new courses that have been introduced include mechanical, manufacture, mechanical manufacturing and automation, metal and non-metal technology, marine mechanics, building construction and security management, among others, or he says require upgrading facilities for the practical aspect of the training. Minister Takaiza has disclosed that these new courses have come on board in Tibeta institutions through the close collaborations with the mines. He has since stated that the newly introduced courses will help the country have an increased cadre of skilled graduates, a situation that will see more youths move away from depending on white-collar jobs. So right now we have uh, some uh, short training programs that we are promoting in our trade schools in the area of uh, uh, handling uh, sanitation, uh, maintenance of fecal slug and treatment plants, and also other uh, training programs on how to operate and maintain vacuum, trunk, uh, vacuum uh, truck operations and also enforcement of fecal uh, slug management. But also we worked with the mines to develop other uh, uh, modern training programs, if I may call them, which we didn't have in the past and amongst these we have um, uh, mechatronics. We didn't have uh, mechatronics as a, a, a standalone course in this country, but right now we have an approved syllabus which we are promoting in some of the uh, training institutions, especially those that are owned by uh, the mining companies. We also have uh, a new program in metal and non metal technology, uh, security management, marine mechanics and also maintenance and management of mechanical and electrical equipment, especially equipment that uh, uh, our colleagues in the health sector use. So you'll find that uh, in that regard, I think we have made quite uh, some progress to introduce new programs. But uh, that also has come with a challenge in the sense that uh, we need now to help our training institutions to upgrade so that they are able to run with these new learning programs. And we are glad that the government, through the support of the Skills Development Fund, is on hand to try and procure some teaching aids, which will be supplied in some of these training institutions, so that they are able to deliver on these new uh, training programs. Northwestern Chambers of Commerce and WCC has formally embarked on campaign of economic diversification in line with the 7th National Development Plan. This is in a bid to widen market opportunities for its members. NWCC outgoing president Josephine Magondo says that the chamber is closely working with various stakeholders such as government ministries in establishing an agribusiness incubator. Ms. Makondo says that the chamber has also enhanced the contribution of women and youth in the areas of commerce and trade. She states that the NWCC will equally be the implementing agency for the Lobito Corridor Trade Facilitation Project. Ms. Makondo said this when she presented the chamber's 2018 annual national annual general report before elections for a new NWCC executive held in Sulawesi. 
And speaking during the award giving gala night, newly elected NWCC President Makombi Kafuta said that entrepreneurs have the ability to make Northwestern Province the best destination for investment. Mr. Kaputa Kafuta has also acknowledged the barriers at which female entrepreneurs encounter, which hinder them from becoming successful in running businesses. Chief Mumena of Kalumbila District, who also attended the event, called on entrepreneurs to take advantage of the opportunities that have been created due to the increased population in the province. Chief Mumena has urged private companies to consider filling the gap, which is not catered from by mines in the entrepreneurship sector. On that note, we end the news, but before we go, a recap of stories making headlines once again. A 68-year-old man of Chip Kachpichila's area in Lundazi district of Eastern Province has drowned in Kakumba stream. And the Health Professions Council of Zambia HPCZ has closed down 32 healthcare facilities in Lusaka for breaching the national healthcare standards. On behalf of everybody involved in the production of the news, my name is Nelson Zulu, wishing you a pleasant viewing.